Welcome to Intro to Irini. Um, this, uh, I'm, I'm deeply aware that it's this talk, the next talk, and then beer. Um, this is worth it, I promise. This is our Intro to Irini talk. Um, if you haven't heard of Irini, um, which I'm now realizing might well be pronounced Irini, uh, are there any Greek people in the audience? Is it Irini or Irini? Irini. Neither is the answer to that question. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we're going we're gonna to get started. So this is our talk about intro to Irini. Um, clickers never work on stage. There is no clicker. There is no click. Oh, well. Watch that. Um, <laughs> So, I am Dr. Jules. I'm an IBM. -er. I'm a proud Irenia. Oh, sorry. Don't worry, Kubernetes is more stable than Keynote. Uh, <laughs> uh, this is Herr Jules, uh, my colleague, um, and uh, we are going to tell you about Irini. Uh, this talk is in three parts. Uh, the first part is why we have done such a thing as Irini, the second part is how. We did such a thing as Irene. And the third part is a demo um, of the thing that we did called Irene. Um, or, this is my favorite slide, in the words of the Buddha, there is suffering. <laughs> there is a path to end suffering. And this is a demo of the path to end suffering. So if that doesn't set us up, I don't know what does. Um, let's talk about why we're doing this. OK. <clears throat> so for the last few summits, there has been a big, scary elephant in the room. <laughs> and this elephant has a name. It's Kubernetes. <laughs> and what we did, we give it a less scary name, right? CFCR. And we put it next to CFAR. But renaming things doesn't really solve our problems, right? It's still Cloud Foundry and Kubernetes. Click. OK, I think I have to switch to this click. Ah, there we go. And people start asking questions. Is it Kubernetes versus Cloud Foundry? Is it Kubernetes and Cloud Foundry? Or is it Kubernetes or Cloud Foundry? And that's all valid questions, right? But we, before we get to these questions, let's first talk about what Cloud Foundry and what Kubernetes is. So Cloud Foundry is two things. It is the CF push my app, CF find my service. And of course, it's the container orchestrator, Diego and Garden, so the, the thing that runs all this stuff in the cloud, the how. And the CF push is the developer experience. And you can also see this from another perspective, uh, which is the, from a role perspective. And the CF push here is the developer role. And the, all the backend stuff, like the container orchestrator, Diego and Garden, this is the operator role. So we have here a clear separation of concerns. But what we really want, and what I really love, is the CF push experience. And I'm quite sure that a lot of people here love the CF push, push experience that Cloud Foundry provides us. I mean, the container orchestrator is great. And I mean, Jules is passionate by Garden and all the low-level stuff, containers. But what we really love is the CF push, and that's what we want. So what is Kubernetes? Kubernetes is deployment, stateful sets, replica sets, nodes, pods, stains, annotation, daemon sets. I could do that forever. And looking at this from a uh, role perspective, uh, they're a little bit overlapping, right? So somebody who deploys an app could be a developer or maybe an operator. There are some tools like a package manager like Helm. This is for developers to make it easier, but still, it's not clear. And still, with all these options, Kubernetes is a powerful and a great scheduler. And it gives the operators the flexibility they need. And that's where Kubernetes has its place. But for the developers, it's maybe a little bit too complex, right? And as the founders already of Kubernetes said, it is a platform platform, which means 
that Kubernetes is a platform to build platforms, and it's not a platform by itself. So it's never intended to be this developer experience like Cloud Foundry. So we have them side by side. We have the developers of Cloud Foundry, and we have the operators of Cloud Foundry on the left side, and we have Kubernetes on the other side with their operators and developers. But what we really, really would like to have is this. We would like to have this developer experience from Cloud Foundry and make the uh, operators happy with Kubernetes and all the flexibility and power that it has. And a few people already suggested some solutions to this. And the first option that I want to talk about is one that, I already talked about, that we already uh, mentioned. It's putting them side by side. So putting them side by side, yeah, we have the full power of Cloud Foundry. We have the CF push experience. And yeah, we have the full power of Kubernetes. But there's still some downsides with this. You have two sets of nodes. You have two schedulers to monitor. You have two different ops models. And you have two communities. It's a lot of effort. So option two is Bosch to the rescue. So what is that? It is using Bosch and deploy Cloud Foundry to Kube. So using a Kubernetes CPI and while deploying containerize CF and put it on top of Kubernetes. And this solves density. So you only have one set of nodes, with this, which is the Kubernetes nodes. And it's great, but it still has some downsides. Um, so you deploy a complex thing on top of another complex thing, and neither the CF apps nor CF has really any benefits of the Kube scheduler, which is a great scheduler, right? And now you have two problems. You had n plus m complex things, but now you have n time m com uh, complex things. For example, let's say CPU limits. So if a container runs out of memory. Is it the inner container or the outer container? Now let's go to option three, containerized Cloud Foundry. This is a bad option, I guess. It is converting Bosch releases up front before we deploy. And now we can use uh, Kubernetes native ways to deploy Cloud Foundry, which is awesome, like Helm. It makes it really easy. And now we have a real benefit. And by the way, this is now available on IBM Cloud. It's called Cloud Foundry Enterprise Edition, so make sure to check it out. Yeah, but now let's, I still have to say, uh, there are also some down downsides to this. We still have that complex thing in another complex thing. We have this Diego scheduler inside the Kubernetes scheduler, which is scheduling containers into containers. We have nested containers. It's weird. We have still this end time end problems. So we looked at three options, but each of those options doesn't really be, is, isn't really a good option. So what's the solution to this? And this is something that Jules will tell you. Cool. So I get to look smart by telling you the solution. Um, so let's talk about the solution. And to talk about the solution, we want to talk about the goals, what we're trying to achieve. So to summarize again, we want to keep that CF push experience that lets you focus on your code, bind services, push stateless code, and don't worry about all the other stuff. But we don't want to make people learn and manage a new scheduler to do that. We want them to be able to reuse the existing knowledge with a consistent experience. And yeah, we'd like to have one community and bring these together. Um, I've, I've spent a lot of time talking to container people and I try and tell them about how great it is to just be able to see a push and not worry about things. And then I have to explain to them that they're going to have to learn Diego, and then they're going to have to learn Bosch. And you can see the enthusiasm drain away uh, as you start to um, describe that. And that's fair. These are great technologies. But asking anybody to learn a whole different technology uh, to use your stuff uh, is a big ask even when your stuff is great, which it is. Um, so what do we do about it? CF is a developer experience. It's a developer experience that I love and I want to use. 
But Kube is a scheduler that's got increasing amounts of mind share and that a lot of operators already offer and already have skills in. So let's use Kubernetes as the Cloud Foundry scheduler. And that way, our developers are happy, our operators are happy, everyone is happy. Let's all be happy. <laughs> I knew if I paused long enough. Um, so this is Project Irini. This is what this is. This is OPI, <laughs> uh, the orchestrator provider interface. And we're obviously riffing on this Bosch idea of a cloud provider interface, which is how Bosch is able to run on all these different infrastructures as a service. It's the same idea, but at the container layer. Um, we're only going to implement it for Kubernetes for now, um, but actually being decoupled from that Kubernetes abstraction um, it just seems like a good idea. Uh, so we have this orchestrator provider interface. What does that look like? Um, here is a, I call these complexity diagrams, um, boxes. Um, you're not supposed to read the boxes. You're just supposed to be able to kind of squint and see there's lots of them. Um, <laughs> how do we, um, how do we uh, Kubernetesify this? How do we Irini or Irini or neither of the two ify this? Um, we do that. Um, as you can see, it's much more simple um, by squinting. Um, so the big blue thing is Kubernetes. Um, the small pink thing is a little mapping layer, which is called Irini. And in the original Diego architecture, we have a sync loop that converges things in the Cloud Controller database, your apps, with things in the Diego database, your containers, your LRPs. The same thing happens with Irini. We take the states in the Cloud Controller, your apps, and we sync them into Kubernetes, into deployments, stateful sets, and services. So let's dive into that. Um, you do a CF push, um, as this chart demonstrates. Um, it goes through Arini. It becomes Kubernetes objects. Specifically, uh, if you know about CF, you'll know that CF thinks in terms of droplets, um, and root file systems, whereas Kubernetes thinks in terms of images. What we didn't want to do was build something that was mapping to Kubernetes, but was mapping to non-native Kubernetes objects. We wanted to make sure that the things that end up in Kubernetes are as native and normal as possible, so all your regular workflows and knowledge works if you're an operator of them. So we convert the droplets into a Docker image before we send it to Kubernetes with a custom registry that puts the droplet on top of the root FS. It looks like this. If you think of an app container, there's the top layer, which is my app. In Diego, that's a tar file that we untar onto a root FS container. Um, in, uh, uh, in Kubernetes, instead, we just create on the fly this OCI image describing the same thing. So we then have a URL for that object, that collection of layers, that describes what we would like Kubernetes to do, which is the droplet and the root FS. That means all the cloud controller stuff about droplets stays exactly the same. You can still roll back droplet versions. You've still got automated patching. Um, so the registry um, is now in bit service. It's just a custom registry. It sits on top of the blob store. Um, that's how we map droplets to images natively. We also map apps to stateful sets or deployments. They're currently stateful sets just to maintain parity of the instance index field. Uh, but hopefully, they'll move to deployments when we deprecate instance index. Um, and we also map all your routes into services and go root to stuff. So everything in the Cloud Controller stays the same, and it's just a convergence loop into totally native Kubernetes objects. Um, there is one other thing. Um, this is our staging component, so we can do staging uh, without needing Diego. We run the same build packs code in a Kubernetes job. We obviously call it Stagenetes. Uh, that's how to spell Stagenetes. Um, and it's just a cube job that converts your stuff, and it just uploads droplets. It doesn't upload images, because we want to keep the ability to keep stuff patched and to roll back droplet versions. So a uh, brief aside, why didn't we do this before? Um, if it's such a good idea, why are we only doing it now? Uh, we had genuinely, I think, very good reasons for hesitating to do this for a while. The main one was it wasn't time. There was a lot of uh, movement in the scheduler market, and spending lots of effort moving us to a scheduler at that time didn't deliver a lot of value to any particular user. Uh, who cared right then? Uh, why do people care now? I think because scheduling is now a commodity. 
And the fact that it's a commodity means there's, this, there's a huge market of tools and services uh, and mindshare and tutorials and skills around running it, and therefore giving people the option of using those makes a lot of sense. Um, it means you can delegate all of your Kubernetes operator stuff to a Kube as a service and just run the CF bits uh, while still getting all the benefits of CF push. Um, think about the, the haiku. You can't do a CF Summit talk without mentioning the haiku. It's actually a rule. Um, there's a haiku about the rule, I suspect. Um, here is my code. Run it on the cloud for me. I don't care how. The great thing about that, the CF promise has always been, you just care about CF push. We will care about the how. And you will not have to change how you work as that how changes. As new things like Istio come along, they will get imported into the platform without you changing stuff. As new things like Kubernetes come along, they will be imported into the platform without you changing stuff. Um, I think that's pretty cool. So uh, what changed really is it's time. It's time now. CF push is always the thing that we cared about. And now that Kubernetes is a commodity, we can make everyone happy. And so we should. Um, let's have a demo of the end of suffering. Um, that's a hell of a setup for a demo. Um, let's watch it happen. OK, let's get to the cool stuff. Um, a demo. Um, before we start with the demo, actually, I just want to talk a little bit of the, about the environment to set up. So on IBM Cloud, uh, I permissioned a Kubernetes cluster using the IBM Kubernetes service. And on top of that, I deployed a containerized CF, including Irini. And you will see my terminal. And it's basically uh, split up in two panes. So there will be four, but the left pane would be the Cloud Foundry part. So I will perform all these CF CLI commands. And the right side will be the Kubernetes part. And I will perform the kubectl commands on that side. And this is really the, the left side is really the developer role, and the right side is the operator role. And we have a perfect balance between the developers and the operators. OK, so let's get to the demo. OK, uh, I hope that everybody can read my terminal. I think that is the perfect size. Um, well, I hope it's the perfect size. Um, so as said, left side Cloud Foundry. Um, on the left upper pane, I did a watch onto CF apps, and I already deployed a app, which is called Hello Summit. So hello. And on the right side, there is the uh, coop object of, the, of this app. It has um, the name is basically the GUID of that app. And it's running, but we will push an app immediately, another one, so that you can see what what, uh, how uh, uh, Irini works and uh, how things appear on Coop and how on CF. And yeah, let's first um, take a look at the um, C containerized CF deployment. So let's make this a bigger screen for now. I hope this will switch to a nicer view. Yeah, there we go. So here's whole Cloud Foundry as you're used to. Um, there are all the components, but with one difference, there is no Diego included here, right? So you don't see any Diego component. But what you see is the Irene component, which will do all the work for Cloud Foundry to schedule the apps on top of, of Kubernetes. And here we have the Irene namespace. This is the namespace where all the apps are ending up. Great. So let's start. Um, let's push an app. And let's call this for now. CF push an app. And let's see what happens. So you see the basic Cloud Foundry output. But what you won't see now is the staging logs, because they currently uh, are not streamed to the CF CLI. But you see here that there is a pod which is doing the staging on Kubernetes side. And what we could do is we could simply um, show the logs of that um, staging job. And you should see the exact output of the staging that you usually see on the CF push. So let's just wait till it stages the app. And 
then we'll see that one of one instances on the Cloud Foundry site will run. So the staging job is done. The app is already scheduled. It just needs to get ready. So this takes a second or something, maybe two, maybe three. But there we go. It runs. We have a running app. You see here um, an app. Um, it has an URL. And we will curl it in a second. But let's first perform some basic CF CLI commands like let's CF stop it. CF stop an app. Let's see what happens. So you already see that on Kubernetes side, so on the upper uh, right side, it just terminated the app. But CF apps still s says, hey, the app is there, and it's just zero of one instance is running. So let's bring the app back up again. CF start an app. There we go. And now you will see in the upper right pane on the Kubernetes side how the pod uh, comes up again. So there we go. Awesome, right? That's great. So it's just waiting till the app is ready. It's ready. And we already see the instances also coming back up one of one instances. And um, what we, of course, also can do is restarting app, which is nothing else than stopping an app and starting an app. And now I would like to scale an app. Let's say three instances. So Irini is deploying stateful sets. And the last digit here in, in, in the name is actually the instance number. So now you see that it will first um, schedule the first, and then the second, and the third uh, instance of that app. And when everything is ready, you also see that three, of three instances are running which is awesome. Then now let's scale it back down to one instance. This also works fine. So we'll see that it terminates again. And also the instance count is updated on the CF apps. Cool. So now let's, let's curl the app, actually. That's, that's one interesting part of the whole demo, right? So I want to curl an app. And there we go. Hello, CF from Kubernetes. And we also have this Elrados integration, which is basically log regator on top of Kub. And now you also can use CF tail an app to show the logs. Nice. So I have an output I was curled when I curl the app. So let's curl again. And then let's see what the tailing an app says. And you see that the um, curl was locked. Awesome. So I think that's enough for the demo. Um, if you go to Cloud Foundry Incubator slash Irini release, there is um, enough documentation on how you can set it up yourself and play around. It's really easy. It's just two Helm installs. So make sure to check it out. It's uh, not a big deal. And have fun with Irini. So back to the slides. Nice. Awesome. That's pretty cool, right? <laughs> All right. And for the thrilling conclusion, the edges now match the middle. So um, <laughs> all comes together. Um, so the summary, CF is the dev experience that I love and I think a lot of us love. Um, I think if you've played around with Kubernetes for a while, you realize it's just an awesome piece of software. But if you watch the ease of doing that CF push and CF scale and CF tail, um, I think you understand why we're excited about, the ability, about being able to bring this CF push experience to Kubernetes people. Um, uh, where are we with this? This is now an official CF incubator project since the last summit, which is really awesome. We currently have two pairs working on it. Um, two from SAP, two from IBM. Um, that was because we wanted to go really fast to begin with, and less pairs goes faster to start with. We're hoping to scale that up uh, soon and actually get more people working on this. We're now ready to start doing that. 
Uh, the smoke tests are passing. Most of the cats are passing, which are the Cloud Foundry acceptance tests. Most of the core cats. There's a very small number that we're just finishing up. It looks larger than it is because there's one or two fixes that fix about 15 um, things. This tends to happen. Um, you can install on a GCP or IBM Cloud. You can probably install on most other Kubernetes as a services. It's just those are the two that we've tested. Uh, and it's just two Helm charts, no Diego and no Bosch, to try it out and kick the tires. There's still lots of reasons you might want to use Diego or Bosch. Um, but if you have a Kubernetes or a Kubernetes as a service and you want to try this out, um, it is just two Helm installs to do that. Um, we are all around the conference and super excited to talk to people if you have any questions. Um, or we also have a whole three and a half minutes um, for any questions that you have. Before I uh, go to questions, um, this is not all of our work. Uh, these are the other people on the team. These are, um, uh, this is me and, and Herr Jules at the, at, the, at the front. Stefan Ulig, Georgi Dankov, Maria Nichiev, Simon Moser, and Andrew Edgar um, that are making this happen. Um, so with that, if there are any questions. Um, so the, the current model is this just an Irene namespace, uh, which you don't have permissions on, which is kind of similar to the Bosch model, uh, where there's like an operator for your Cloud Foundry, if you see what I mean. Um, it would, one of the nice things about this approach is that obviously it would scale quite nicely to saying, well, this operator just operates these apps in this space, for example. So we could um, put different role-based access controls um, on particular apps or particular spaces. Um, one of the things we hope to look at after we hit the first milestone, so the first milestone is all the cats passing and ready for people to use with the core functionality. We're then going to start looking at other features of CF to move over. Uh, and one of the features we've heard a lot of interest in is isolation segments. Um, so with this approach, we could either implement isolation segments by having different namespaces in the one Kubernetes, or actually each um, organization could have a different Kubernetes that it syncs to, uh, which would enable each org from your CF control plane to have a completely different Kubernetes, potentially. Um, I think to begin with, we want to do parity um, for, the, for sort of the, the model for the apps. Um, although I hope that by, uh, by doing something like this, this will start to bring the two communities together so we can change some of the CF abstractions for both schedulers, um, if you see what I mean. So we'll, we'll have people from that community getting more involved with this, giving us feedback, and a virtuous cycle of both of them changing. Um, I also hope that over time, various of the other components will start to become more integrated with Kubernetes. So you already see that happening with things like the Go routers move to Istio. Um, hopefully more and more things will start doing uh, that kind of stuff. Um, you could imagine, um, I don't think this will happen soon, but you could imagine, um, let's say Cloud Controller decides it would be nice if operators didn't have to use a database. Uh, let's allow CRDs to be used as a backing store for the Cloud Controller database. Or you can imagine all sorts of things like that that could evolve over time. But for now, what we want to do is just uh, have the most native operator experience for the apps that are pushed um, with the same exact CF push experience for the developers. Um, so it, it depends where the limit is. Um, so some limits are enforced in the cloud controller as part of the orgs and spaces and quotas model that exists up there. Um, and those would stay. Those are part of that kind of, 
you know, rapid application 12-factor thing around Cloud Foundry. Um, there are other things that are limitations of the platform that might change. Um, so one thing I'm quite excited about, one thing I, I really like the idea of, um, is in, there's this idea in, in the Kube ecosystem of virtual kubelets, so serverless containers. So the idea is there are no nodes. Um, as containers are pushed into the, your Kubernetes cluster, um, there's a node in there that pretends like it's any size. Uh, behind the scenes, the provider is doing everything to make that work. Uh, but it means that you don't have to set up n nodes in advance at all. Uh, you can just CF push and have it scale up and down, and someone else manages that. Someone else um, deals with all the complexity of making that happen. And you just do your CF push and pay for as much, as many containers as that takes. Um, so I think use cases like that um, come out of using this commodity technology. Now that that commodity is available as a service, um, it enables you to do things like not pay for whole environment resources because they're available as a service. So um, it depends which, um, where that resource limit is. Uh, should be installed? Yeah, you need to go to yeah, develop branch for now. It will be. <laughs> yes, 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 the Helm instructions. Yeah. Because, it, because obviously that. we are developing this for CF Summit, um, let's yeah. just admit it. Um, we wanted to have this ready for CF Summit, um, and we do when we merge it. Um, so yeah, at the moment, look in the develop branch um, or ping us on Slack. We're in Irene Dev on Cloud Foundry Slack. Um, and we will very happily hold anyone's hand getting started with the Helm stuff. We, we really want people to kick the tires and start giving us feedback about what does and doesn't work and what does and doesn't make sense when you, when you use this for real stuff. This is flashing times up, and I didn't see any hands in the last six seconds. Um, so thank you very much. Have a great rest of the conference. <laughs>